Good morning. How's everyone doing? It's good. Awesome. Is anyone planning to go for the Finas conference in New York City? I'll I'll be around the um it, you know, uh, I'll be around the area this evening, but I'm not actually going. Uh, last year, it was uh, fairly, um, it, it, it was fairly worthless, <laughs> I found. Mm, okay. Like, there wasn't really anything all that interesting. Um, there, I mean, it seems very much intended for banks to be talking to other banks. Gotcha. It's not really like, like, I think that, that, you know, I mean, there were a couple of conversations that came out of it. Like, I, I ended up having a bunch of conversations with them about supply chain stuff and SBOMs and had follow-up meetings afterwards. But there wasn't anything particularly interesting that anybody showed off there. I think we have 
Parham, so I think we can get started. Um, looks like the usual folks, but um, this meeting is being recorded. It'll be uploaded and available online. Uh, participation in this meeting is um, in accordance with the code of conduct for the LF as well as OpenSSF as well as antitrust policy. Um, more details can be looked up on the LF website. Um, I think oh, no new folks, so we can go right into the agenda. Um, if anyone has any topics that they'd like to talk about today, please put them in, in the agenda uh, in the meeting notes. Um, if not, we'll go off the first, the first one, which is Ben. Yeah, this should hopefully be a quick one, um, but we've had several, you know, pretty small releases uh, in the last couple of weeks, and um, I've been going back and forth in my own head about like, do we want to try and get a blog post out for every one of them, just be, so that way people, you know, know that they exist? Um, or do we want to do something smaller? On the one hand, like you know, we fixed a single bug is probably not worth a blog post. Um, on the other and we don't want to, you know, just fill up announcements with, hey, we fix a sm small thing. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, it, I think it's good to show activity. And also if somebody is affected by um, that one uh, bug that we fixed, we definitely want to know about it. Um, so I haven't been able to convince myself one way or another how we should approach it, whether we should, you know, sort of take those small ones and roll up into like, every two weeks or every month if we haven't had a major one like hey here's the the minor releases we've done or uh so it's looking for thoughts on that yeah i, I was gonna uh, specifically suggest like an every other week kind of thing because i think like with the releases like there's going to be um as you know like as we're ramping up to 1.0 there's going to be times when we're releasing every other you know day it feels like and then there's going to be times probably where it's like oh you know we don't release for a month but i think something like uh, i don't want to say this week in guac or this month in guac something like that of like things like that of like oh you know releases is kind of like the first thing but beyond that is stuff like hacktoberfest and and some of these other things that are um some of these other things that are coming up i think would be really cool to to highlight as well in in that so folks recognize that like not only is it not just the are there new features coming out or or bug fixes but oh hey the community is active and we're doing cool stuff there i, mean, I would suggest we just do minor and major updates and all the other bug fix stuff like all the you know the patch versions i think we just put that in in slack you know like hey okay. this changed this changed and this changed and then, and then when we do like the, you know, like a, a minor version change and it can be like, Hey, here's all the stuff that changed, you know, as part of the overarching stuff, like if oh yeah, this, this smaller feature got added at the same time, all that kind of stuff. How do I feel? Uh, Brendan? Yeah, I feel like there are kind of like two audiences for this, right? One of them is like, I'm using Guac and I'm affected by breaking changes or things that I may potentially um, need to know of. And then there is a kind of like heartbeat, keep the com like, if there's something new happening, we want people to engage. I think like those two are maybe separate things. And maybe we can do both, but just like in different mediums. And I don't know whether. Like maybe the releases and blog posts is good. Maybe like if it's a minor, like a patch release can just go into the Slack channel or something. Uh, and Mihai? The number, but yeah. Yeah, so I think the same, uh, two separate channels, one with just classic for uh, structure with a similar structure like guac version x has been released and uh, see the release notes here and nothing else and then blog posts periodically where either when we do a breaking change or periodically like every month this month in guac or every other week or something like that this is what i saw other projects also do the same way so 
Yeah, I, I agree uh, with that sort of hybrid approach of like the important stuff in a blog. Like I like I, I agree that um, as an example, I would say in most cases we wouldn't include like a bug fix. But if it's like, oh, my gosh, there is like some, you know, crazy bug fix that that like has been hurting folks for for a really long time or something that's like a subtle thing that would probably make the blog the blog or like a big feature would make the blog or you know again something like walk you know hacktoberfest and 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 some of those other things and i i, I just um also posted a link to um one of the, the 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 projects that i like just called like this week in bevy um which is about the bevy game engine and like i like their you know this person's approach he also does like a weekly video thing but um I don't think we have nearly enough, as much content. Like I think the Bevy team is like 60 people or something like that. But um, I think having even just like certain cool things that might come in would, would be cool um, to, to, to at least highlight, you know, again, like, oh, you know, new contributors or, or new, you know, yeah. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it sounds like we're, pretty good consensus here so i think i like the idea of doing a regular like here here's what's going on i'm thinking maybe monthly to start just because if it's if the update is too small that's worse than not putting it out um so maybe like i'll in order to help promote the hacktoberfest stuff for example i think i'll just aim for the first friday of the month being the you know guac monthly update kind of thing and we can talk about releases new contributors things that are in the works, whatever. So I do like that idea. So um, unless anyone has something else to add, I am satisfied with this point and we can move on to the next item. Sounds good. Before we move on to the next item though, I'm very curious, Ben, what is cycle computing? <laughs> So that's a company I worked for uh, for many years, started out doing um, high throughput computing, um, consulting, and sort of meta software using HT Condor, uh, gotcha. and then got, a, got pivoted into the cloud HPC space pretty early. Um, so I had been there for several years and we got, when we got acquired by Microsoft. So the company no longer exists, um, but the product still does. Nice. Yeah, well, for some reason, my mind was like, oh, you got you have a data center for bicycles, and it's like, it's power by soul cycle. <laughs> you know? we, we had that confusion a lot. <laughs> oh. Cool. Um, so next item, I, I have two items here. One of them is, I, I remember we had a discussion on collect sub, and then we said pretty much that, um, we would make everything, push everything to ingestion and then remove the need for collect stuff. Everything would become certifiers for now until we have the need to, to recreate that, right? Um, I tried to find where we captured the decision, but I could not find it. So I- No, I, just... I don't think so. Oh, we didn't? Okay. I no, I think, I think uh, for that collector subscriber, I think we decided that or was it? I think we wrote that down. Uh, also, it's post post one point oh, but um... yeah, I think I couldn't find the discussion. This so I was like, uh, I don't remember what we. Last time I remember, I think we were going to create a a, a new architecture for it. But that's I think we were saying for, sorry. Oh, I was saying that. That's what I remember too. Like the pops up type queue thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but for 1.0, what did we, I remember we had like, that was a long-term solution. And then 1.0, we, we, we decided we would, it's not officially su supported until that was done. Or we keep it as it is, I think. Is, it, is that what it was for 1.0? I don't know that we came to like a concrete decision. Okay, so maybe oh. we should discuss this for that yeah. 1.0. <laughs> uh, for some reason, I I had the impression that one of the proposals last time was that 
we just set everything to ingestion. You have a flag, turn it on and off. Um, and then that would be kind of like the 1.0 support, like the, the post um, collector would not would not allow that. How would it work on ingestion? <laughs> so how, how are you suggesting that? Um, so at least for the depths of death stuff, mm -hmm. right? I, I think I, I did say that I, I do what you did or someone did on the OSV, uh, what's it OSV? Yeah, so it would like query OSV during the ingestion process and then oh, I see. the five bombs, right? I see, I see, um, okay. Then oh, the, I see. Yeah, I, see. I, I think the only tricky ones is like, um, so that's what that I think is not, not not too bad. I think the tricky ones may be like the OCI collector if they're using the collect sub. Yes. Yeah. Or the get one. Is that being used by anybody at this point? That's, I think that's an open question. I don't think anybody's using the OCI collector in that way or the Git collector in that way. So maybe we, you know, not include those as part of the 1.0 release and just have the depths.dev on ingestion and then remove collector subscriber for now for 1.0 and then we re-architecture it afterwards or after 1.0, I mean. What would the configuration for the OCI and, and the Git, the Git one be, would that just be a config file within the deployment or to actually deploy you mean or yeah let's say you had like a git collector right that you wanted to mm -hmm. uh, look at certain stuff or your oci repository that you wanted to look at certain images go ahead jeff yeah, I mean, so I think the thing here is like we would, we're, we're essentially going to decide that a subset of functionality is not part of 1.0, right? So what we would want to do is figure out how to delineate that in our documentation and what that means for the Quark deployment. So if we say uh, the C sub is not 1.0 and the only way to use the OCI collector mm -hmm and the git collector is through the C sub. So therefore those are also not 1.0. Um, so we could remove those. I, I personally think that we should then remove those from any default Helm chart or Docker compose, uh, and then figure out a way to both document those on our doc site and then have readmes in those directories in the code. Um, and then if somebody wants to use it, they're free to in the same way that they are today, like they could start up the C sub, they could add those to their compose, um, but it's just not part of 1.0. Uh, and I, I think that's reasonable to go forward with for a 1.0 plan is to say like, hey, this is something that's not fully baked, uh, but it's still there. Um, and that, that's what I think kind of would, would make sense. Uh, so the OCI collector can be used outside of the C sub. So I don't think we need to like remove it entirely from one point. I would just be like, hey, it doesn't work with the C sub. So you can still well, pass in values. But what would be what would be the it. configuration, right? Like, would it be as part of the default deployment, or is it just like here's something you can run that we support, <laughs> but only yeah? In so it's ways. kind of it's similar to files, I guess. Guac collect files. Sure. Where, where it just drops it into the queue and like on uh, mats and a blob store like it like it does. I think wait, in that wait, kind wait. of 
So you mean like as a daemon or as like a CLI? As a CLI tool at this point. Okay, so we wouldn't support running it as a daemon. No. Because that's where the C sub would come into play, which we don't have for 1.0. Well, well, so if you want to pull images. Have... It doesn't have to, right? Though, because like you could you could configure the OCI collector to just collect paths, OCI paths, right? Yes, yeah, so you can have you can pass in paths, image paths. There was also an open PR that Ridvan opened that he never completed, which we can make as part of 1.0 if you want to. But it's like that supports collecting all OCI artifacts in a registry, which he never completed. Stuff like that. It's like, okay, I want to pull in all the S-bombs from this registry, for example, or I want to pull in the S-bombs from this image. You know, run it as a CLI tool, kind of how we do collect collect files. And then so that we don't lose that capability. And then, but yeah, you lose the C-sub and daemon kind of thing. Same, same for, I mean, I'm not sure if anybody has ever used the Git one. I don't know, but you could keep it around. I mean, I don't think we're losing capability by saying it's not, you know, stable. It's still there. It's 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 there in the same way it is today. <laughs> um, so like, yeah, we could call some things one one zero, like some capabilities of these collectors, but we don't have to. Like, and we could. The, I think the smaller the smaller set of functionality we call one point the easier it is to us for us to commit to that. Um, and so it, it's a decision, like we could go either way, uh, but like, we're not going to go and delete all that other stuff. We just need to find out a way to delineate it. And that, that makes sense. So if I understand, if we just say like collects up is, is, um, not stable for 1.0. So not, not part of 1.0. The implication would be that um, for all the collectors that exist today, uh, you could run all of them as CLIs, um, and only currently only for the files collector that would support being run as a daemon. Oh, so going too far. I mean, I don't know that we have to call again, like I don't know that we have to call the other collectors 1.0 either. I mean, we could again, we could, but we don't have to. Like we could also just run them with the C sub. Like it's just as much you could run them as this CLI. Like I don't know. And you know, we don't have to say like you can't do this. <laughs> So I guess if, if we go back to the 1.0 question, um, what's the minimum requirements for us to be able to do most of what we have in the demos, right? I, I think that is probably just a file collector. Yeah, we don't use OCI or Git. No, file and then depth dev and OSV. By this case, I think if, if if we are going to the route of uh, OSV has to keep running as a certified, well, oh, the OSV certified has to keep running. I think depth of depth, do we want to be able to keep running that? Or is that just on injection time that's sufficient? The way I it mean, runs now, the way it runs now, it it is keeping track of pearls that it has already scanned or looked at. So it's not going to relook at it again. Right? It's not going to requery depths at dev. I'm like, oh, I've already seen this. So there's no point of me looking at it again because it doesn't expect a version to change. Right? If it's if it's query depths at dev, nothing should change as part of that release. Right? Because they're never going to overwrite that specific version, right? They're going to release a new version, 
which will create a new pearl. So which will, and then which will get rescanned by the next time it comes through by whatever S bomb, and then new data gets added to depth. So we don't have to re keep rerunning depth.dev because we're not going to be collecting new information ever. Well, I mean that's right? not true at all. Like depth, like the 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 tree should change every day, but we can take that stance as guac. So that's what somebody might want. Why would it change? Because like all the dependencies change. Oh, but I think, version? I think it depends. Yeah, on the Yeah, version. for a single version, like every every day, if I install pip, some package one point two, it's going to give me a different tree, and depth dev will update. It, it goes and re decides what today today what would be the resolution oh, tree see. for this package and updates there, which means like which makes it not very useful for people because their their resolution tree is going to be totally different, but. But that aside, like for Guac, we could say like, hey, let's just scan on ingestion and be done with it. That's like an okay stance, but it's false to say like, okay. that will never change because it will, because it's trying to trying to reflect reality. I mean, in that case, it makes no sense for us to rescan then, because <laughs> if it's always going to be inaccurate. So. Well, it's just, yeah. it's going to be what it is to going to be today. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's useful in some way to some people, like, and that's why we're putting it there. I think that's fair. I think that's a fair. It was, it was always an estimation, right? Dev stop dev. It was never going to be a reality. So that, I think it's fine just to scan it on ingestion and not scan it again. I, I mean, that's what, that's how it does it currently. So it's like, <laughs> it's not like it's changing functionality. So, because otherwise we'll end up with like crazy amounts of nodes. <laughs> I don't think we can handle. So that's at the but and... now the so now do we have another so that's why I put the uh, discuss timestamping because we have this issue of we're recreating things now like let's say dev dev runs again on the same s bomb right it's going to create a new node because the timestamp is going to be different uh, and I got. I'll have to take a look at where it's grabbing the timestamp for some of these things. All right. Yeah. Either way, depth.dev may be different the next time it goes, goes around, right? The dependence tree is different, whatever is different. And how do you stop it from recreating multiple nodes every single time? Cause you can't control that anymore. I mean, maybe it's correct to recreate nodes if so it's run again, because that's the reality of today and everything has timestamps. I mean, like Quark is supposed to be okay. this storage of both historical and you know, present of what the accurate tree was, you know, so that's if somebody wants to get the tree every day, then they can't. Okay. So, so are you thinking about it in terms of uh, a, is this a storage issue? Is this a query issue? Is this a, it's difficult to understand the results issue? Well, so I'm thinking about it from, for example, certify, like clearly defined, like right now, every time the certifier runs, it's going to create a new as source set node also. Because the timestamp, which you can probably change, but yeah, I mean, we're creating, we're, uh, which is okay. So this I think, is, I, this yeah, is a resolution, I think should... right? It, it becomes diff difficult to resolve your results, right? I think that, that's what you're saying. Now I have two has sauce at, I don't know which one to, to believe. Well, it's going to be, you, you, you have to go filter it on the latest now. Okay, what's the latest one that I've got? based on time, that's my most accurate one, basically. Like, can we do all that in, in, uh, in the REST API? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we like, can, uh, yeah. Opinionated policy. We can, but I think we're just, we're unnecessarily adding nodes to the database, right? I don't know if that's a big deal at this point. I mean, I think the certifier should have configuration. 
like some bit, somebody might want to record that every day they checked the license and that on that day, the license was said to be this or the vulnerabilities was said to be this. Uh, but some people might not want to create a new, a new node if it hadn't changed, for example. You know, they don't need to know that that on day day X it was checked. They just want to know, oh, what's the latest result and just keep that. So that's some configuration that can be in the in the certifier that says, like, hey, do I want to create new nodes if nothing changed? Just to update the date. Some people might want that, some people might not. But the whole like the whole Glock ontology where it's you know the the opinion verb nodes are have timestamps and have sources origins is to show, to be able to record these opinions right and so if you want to record that every day this thing said said this then you're able to do that um, do people want that maybe maybe not yeah yeah I think I I need to change. The clearly, clearly defined where it's setting the known, known since for the hash source set. I need to make it the same as when clearly defined last scanned it, because there's no point of it changing if clearly defined is saying the same thing. Like it scanned it, you know, a month, a few months ago, and I check it tomorrow. It still says I scanned it a few months ago. There's no point of creating a new node because nothing's changed. So that there's a, I'll fix that. There's a small bug there then that should resolve that issue of like it recreating hash source set again and again. Certify legal will is already set to that. So it's not going to recreate those nodes because those will be like, oh, I saw it last month is this one. I check it tomorrow. Last month is this one. Okay, then I don't then don't create it again because it's the same information again. Do we have that issue with depth dev as well? Depths.dev. Because this stuff doesn't tell us. It doesn't tell us time. Um, but the time will change, right? I don't think it's because I think what's... they run their pipeline every every interval. Depth stop dev will take in. Take time. Yeah, I'll have to take a look at where the time is coming from. Where are we setting it? Update time. Let's see. Yeah. So you're you're not concerned uh, about so, okay. We're setting it. We're setting it. Yeah, we're not setting it based on depth dev. We're setting it based on when we scan it. But but your I think your concern is not so much of a data quality issue, right? It's a it's a no. data usage issue. Yeah. And like so so I guess like would would having the default policy because Im imagine like I guess we, we want users to just talk to the REST API, right? Um yeah. would the default policy having that be a part of the REST API be Good enough. Yeah, the, or is, the REST okay. API needs to check to see what the latest one is of whatever information it gets back. It should do that always for all the nodes, like whatever query it's doing. It should be like, okay, is this the latest one based off all the edges? Yeah, this is the latest one based off time. Then use that one. It, it sounds so. Does that, um, is that all the concerns or do you also have concerns that like the database becomes too big? I think we need to delete, right? I think we need to have some, some process of deleting old nodes after, I don't know, like, I don't know, you know, that maybe make a user configurable, like, oh, I don't care about all this data after a month, right? Then any certified vuln, certified legal that are older than a month like specific things, not like SBOMs, but like certify legal, certify volumes, stuff like that. Maybe you go delete from the database. 
because they're no longer needed anymore, right? And then that's gonna cut down because those are the things that are gonna get recreated, right? Certifiable and certified legal stuff, stuff like that that are running as part of the certifier will keep getting recreated. <clears throat> Maybe even devs.dev. .dev. Maybe it's like, hey, I don't care about all the stuff that came from devs.dev .dev that are a month old. Then you delete has ass bombs. Like, you know, delete everything that came from devs.dev, .dev, has ass bomb, whatever else. Yeah. Specifically, has ass bomb again, because that's probably the biggest thing, because that's all the packages and dependencies and crap. And, and then all the vulnerabilities along with it, whatever else. Like, just nuke all of it. So maybe, you know, like, I think you need some kind of a, a process running that's always checking and cleaning data out. We haven't, we haven't talked about this at all, but I'm not sure if this is something we want to do for 1.0. I feel like it's going to, otherwise the data is going to get out of control because you can have so much old data sitting around. It's going to make the queries slower and slower as time goes on, right? Yeah. Well, uh, <clears throat> hmm. um, I think yes and no, right? Like if if our policies is that I'm only going to check the last month's worth of things, then yeah, data can grow, but the query size may not. Um, yeah, then you, then you, then the queries have to be specific then. Then, then, yeah. you know, let's say, let's say, you know, you had to create queries that'd be like, hey, it, it takes it and takes it in timestamp input, whatever. Give me all the data. Give me all the, you know, query only, only that has above this time range, don't include anything else and give me that back. Right now, they don't do that. Right now, they give you everything back. All right. Maybe it's something that we have to write a bunch of queries and then try it out and then see what the user experience is. Um, but I'm guessing that you've run into that issue. No, I mean, I, we haven't. I mean, it's just, it's just... I was trying to think, <laughs> think about the future kind of thing. Yeah. Um, because I think some of the queries right now, which may be more of a bug also, but it's like, like let's say something specified timestamp, they're doing an equal check currently. They may be, which in that case, they should be doing a, doing an equal check yeah so i'm just thinking like you know let's say for rest api we want a specific query it's like the thing i'm working on right now actually is for the certifiers because the certifiers right now just take all the packages uh give me all the packages and then and then check just check for vulnerabilities give me all the packages check for licenses if the for whatever reason the certifier crashes and restarts it's going to start from start from the beginning again it's going to check all the packages again again and again and again it's never like a never-ending loop what would you rather have as a specific query that says, hey, when was this thing last scanned? And if it was scanned in the last, you know, whatever user configurable out, you know, last four hours, then don't scan it again. Cause I don't, cause nothing's gonna happen or last 24 hours, don't scan it again. Give me all the things that haven't been scanned. And that's gonna, that's the only things I wanna go update because I, I don't expect the vulnerabilities, you know, to change in 24 hours, let's say. Whatever, again, let's make it user configurable. Um, so that's, so this way, if the certifier, or whatever restarts, then it's going to start from that list, a smaller list, and it's going to finish because it's like, okay, I'm done because I've, I've already checked everything. So the certifier next time it spins up again, it's not going to keep checking again and again, and again, it's going to be like, all right. Yeah. Based off the time I'm already, I've already checked all this information. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm just going to sit here and do nothing. So that there's an issue open for it. Um, that's the thing I was like, this POCing here, um, in like this branch. But I think we want something like that, like some, and I made a specific query for those things, uh, you know, a, a new GraphQL endpoint that the certifiers can call based on if they're looking for licenses or if they're looking for vulnerabilities. Um, so it's just a much more efficient query. But I think we'll need stuff like that in the future. That's more efficient queries that are like, hey, just search a small subset of the data and not all of it for the REST API stuff, I mean, right, so. Just based off time. Yeah. Yeah, I also, I also think that queries that need to scan the database to resolve, they will also get slower and slower as we get more items. 
If we can use an index, that's not a problem as long as we don't have multiple keys on the same index. But all the queries that scan the data set would uh, become slower and slower. So yeah, I agree that we need a policy to auto delete either based on time or based on number of nodes. Yeah, especially the certifiers, right? Like the license certifier. Like if you're gonna find, like maybe, like we don't do this currently, but it's just like, yeah, I think we either delete or we like, hey, don't, <laughs> if this is something like let us, it gets, it gets out of hand. Ignore devs.dev, any any package that came from devs.dev, ignore it. And well, we don't know that actually. Yeah. We don't uh, I know think where the package came from. So, the soft nice. division does that a little bit, right? You, you can create an index on things that are not not marked for the deletion, the deletion or like the active set. Uh, so I, I tried to summarize the discussion. I think um, I, I put it in the notes, but I kind of broke it down to manage the data on each predicate. You know, I think there are three categories of things that we want. One is what goes in. This is how collectors and certifiers behave. We want to be open data on that. We want to say like, like well, what what notes should they be creating? And then this is what goes out, you know, what gets deleted or soft deleted or like pulled out of the index. Uh, and then the last one is like what things are being queried. So what's the query policy? whether it's like latest only or latest within like a month or something like that. It sounds like we want to define this for every predicate and is this a 1.0 kind of thing does everybody agree that we should have something like this for 1.0 or no it doesn't have to be i think it's it's an opinion from the group i think what do we want to do my my personal opinion about this is that i think we should we should have our perspective on it i don't think it has to be something that we are saying like, oh, these are, these are like, these are a lot of things that are I think, under the hood to most people. Um, so I think we should have an opinion on it and at least to see how it pans out in 1.0, but I don't think we have to, uh, this has to be kind of like advertised. It's like, this is the model and these are kind of guarantees on all these things, because I think based on the feedback, they'll change and we want to be opinionated on that. So you're saying don't announce this as part of 1.0, but do it behind the scenes and see how far we get or. Yeah, to me, it's kind of like, this is like a design, uh, our, our set set of best practices. Um, like it, it, can, it can be documented in the code, but I, I don't think it has to be. Um, but that's my opinion, uh, Jeff. Yeah, so I keep going back to like what makes 1.0 is like what makes it feasible to run uh, indefinitely or like in production. So um, if we're worried that like, if somebody starts using Guac in earnest, and they're going to just blow up their database with the default <laughs> configs because they're adding depth dev and licenses and vulnerabilities every day. Then that's not a, that's not a reasonable 1.0. Uh, now, if we ship with like a default config, like Brandon was saying, if we have a, uh, an opinion that like, Hey, we only scan once a week or something, and that's probably going to be fine. Um, I think that's okay. Um, we should also, like, if we plan to add functionality for deleting, um, we should have a good idea that we're going to be able to do that to an existing database that's been running and been ingesting a lot of data. So if we're committed to that, I think it's okay to say, like, hey, we're going to come up with this later, but we need to just 
have a reasonable, again, have a reasonable config that it's not going to be, that it's going to be something somebody could actually run and also um, have that expectation they're going to be able to come back later with a, an already set up database and, and delete it if they want to turn on that config that we, if we add that functionality in the next my, uh, minor release, then they're going to be able to apply that to one of their existing databases. Yeah, I think that's fine. I, I know a lot of what we, we, we talked about was kind of with the hypothesis that that the data growth is a problem, which I think we all agree seems to be an issue, right? So we don't have to wait for our default policy is to start thinking about this or uh, are we okay? Uh, I'm kind of wondering because this seems like it's something that we just need a bunch of Postgres stuff to, to run separate from the backend. Um, I don't know whether this has to be part of GraphQL. I feel like it doesn't, at least to start, it doesn't necessarily have to be. Um, so I'm kind of wondering whether. Well, it depends on what you're deleting, I guess. Yeah. I think it's tricky because there's a lot of, I think if you don't do it right, you kind of lock the entire database, which is, <laughs> Which I, I, I think may and may not have the, the, the granularity to to be able to have fine green control on the locks. Um but I think like we could work on the schema that's produced by the back end today, right? And just do it transparently beneath. Mm -hmm. Um I'm kind of wondering whether I know, I know like you all have been talking to Alistair. I wonder whether this is a good problem that they will be interested in and it seems fairly like a contained problem. Uh, as somebody who has been <laughs> uh, a little bit out of it, uh, w w which problem again is this? The so deleting or at least like removing from the index um, things that we feel are not going to be used in queries, like old certified legal, old certified. Oh, I see. Yeah, like, yep. yeah. Yeah, I think that seems uh, reasonable. So I guess for, for this is an action item that we should set up sometime with Alistair and kind of talk through the problem. Okay. Yeah. Um, and oh, we can ask him to come to this meeting next week if he can. And then the other one was, uh... On ingestion depths.dev. Yeah, yeah. That, that one I know I, I, I took up to work on. Um, it should be fairly straightforward. 
Yeah, I think it should be fairly straightforward. I uh, I just it's, think it's, it's all easier. yeah, it's all there. You just pass in parallel straight. <laughs> so yeah, 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 and then it should be pretty much the same thing as so as V one. Um, yeah, exactly. But it shouldn't be too bad. Yeah, and you can have I'll, it run. I'll, I'll try and I'll, I'll try and work on it this weekend. Okay. At least start start working on it this weekend. Which yeah, shouldn't be too bad. Um, okay, so let me. I'm gonna copy the decision on the collectors we made um, to the 1.0 punch list. Dep uh oh ingestion or depth step dev on ingestion is gonna slow down ingestion times right even more. Is that an issue though? I guess do do we want it on the on by default? I think at some value in terms of telling us where the source is, right? Well, I think if it takes 250 milliseconds to, more to to get the information, it doesn't seem like a bad idea. How do you know? Where'd you get that number from? 250. <laughs> I don't know. That seems like a reasonable... Uh, is it going to take that? I'm not sure how long it takes. Uh, even it, if it's it, a it second. Is, it is pretty quick. It's not slow. Uh, but it is going to have some time. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I also did note that depth of depth doesn't inc actually include everything, <laughs> but, um, it's still heuristic after all. So are we thinking we're going to remove collector subscriber then for the time being? Like remove it or do we keep it around i mean keep at least for 1.0 1.0 we're not we're not gonna it's not gonna be part of 1.0 right so i think this would be classified as experimental okay so keep it keep it around then yeah i don't think we should yes. delete the code okay. um i think that it should be removed from like i said the uh demos the, and stuff. the docker compose yeah. Um, I think this might, I, I would ask um, Ben for his expertise on like, what's a good way to put, to kind of delineate this kind of stuff in the repository uh, where we kind of, we want it there. We want people to be able to use it, but it's just like not part of the supported release. Um, and you don't have to answer now, Ben. I don't want to put you on the spot, but you know, like, yeah. I think this is something that we can put some thought into and, and have, but uh you know, have it marked in a way that hopefully people don't get confused, but it's there if somebody wants to experiment or, or, or work on it. Yeah, I mean, one thing would be like, you know, don't get stuck on the name, but like, like a modules directory that, you know, or, you know, something that's, it's not community maintained, but it's, you know, kind of off to the side. Experimental doesn't seem right either. Um, but, you know, just something that, you know, kind of indicates that, yes, we're shipping this. No, it's not part of the default. Like, I, you know, you can use it, but, you know, it may not be as fully vetted. Um, and I don't know, you know, how easy it would be to separate from, you know, from a technical standpoint, that code into a 
you know, off to the side kind of space. But, you know, I think if we can, that's probably the best way. Um, you know, if it's not in the compose files that we're shipping by default, then most people probably won't even know it's there anyway. So. Um, I just updated the punch list with all discussions. Um, it looks like, assuming I finished the depths of death collector uh, in, uh, on ingestion this weekend, we probably have only two main things that that we said that we want to handle. One of them is kind of like uh, the persistent storage of like making sure that this scales with time. Um, this was the deletion stuff we talked about. And then the the only other big item that that is in progress really is kind of like the REST API experience, uh, which I think we 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 will have to flesh out. Um, but I think that puts us in a infrastructure wise good position. Mm -hmm. Um, anything else? We have two minutes left. Two minutes left. Awesome. No. See you all around. Thanks. Yep. Bye. Thanks. See you. Thanks.